Hi everyone, uh, could you please tell me if you can hear me okay? Okay, so I will switch to my um, camera. And um, today I want to do some sketching again. Uh, I have some time here. Uh, I can spare today to do some sketching and then I will scan all the pictures I did so far in this sketchbook and clean them up and I'll try to upload it to Patreon. But um, before that, I want to do a few more pages if I can, uh, just to relax. I finished a big picture for my book uh that took me like a week i think to finish so i am using this sketching um to relax a bit also after uh painting a huge thing that was really really detailed so i want to uh, do some sketching i will be using this sketchbook which is the uh, md paper cotton sketchbook it's hard to see the logo it says here MD paper cotton sketchbook. This is the F2 size, so the middle one. And um, for the pencil, I'll be using this Karandash 0.7 pencil, which has 2B leads in it. Okay, and I have some photos that I didn't uh, managed to uh, do last time so um, I'll try to just choose some interesting things from these photos and uh, do some another like elements of Japanese architecture that are outside of the um, house so like signs and posts and stuff like that okay Okay, and this actually, um, I was not really convinced about this paper because it's really um, thin, it's thinner than the paper that I usually use for drawing and, and um, I was like not, not convinced if it will uh, work well. I also don't like so much how it behaves with uh, a pen that I have, like a fountain pen, uh, but uh, with pencil it's really nice actually. Okay, so um, to start, let's do one more sign. Uh, I still have a few signs that I want to uh, do in my like photo collection here. So let's do this one first. And I don't... Um, promise that I can um, answer every question that you send in the in the chat but if you have something you would like me to talk about just um, post it into the chat and if I if I see it um, I can answer okay so this is a uh, so this is a thing that is outside of a shop like a stand And it has like a inside part here. When I'm sketching like this and I'm um, like talking to you about what I'm sketching and explaining um, things like oh this is like a sign and it's 
I used like this and probably it's built like this so it looks like this um, I am reminded of a TV program what uh, I was like watching when I was a kid uh, there was a really famous in Poland uh, a professor that was um, an architect and he was called Professor Dr. Viktor Zin and he was a specialist in um, like old style European architecture especially like Polish architecture so he would but he also drew really well and he had a really long, long running program in television in Polish television that was called uh, how, how do you translate it um, with ink and nib I think Purkiem i węglem so uh, with ink and uh, charcoal probably and um, he was sketching always, always like in the uh, during the program and he was explaining like um, interesting things about old Polish like um, churches and, and, and castles and, and old buildings and how they were made so every time I'm kind of doing this stream and sketching like elements of Japanese architecture um, I feel like um, a bit like him but um, of course he had a lot of more like professional knowledge because he was an architect and I'm not so he knew a lot of more um, like things concrete he had a lot of more concrete knowledge about the things that he was drawing and he was also like a uh, not only an architect, but also architect, but also like a specialist in restoring old buildings. So yeah. Okay, so this sign is a sign that is um, in front of a shop that sells Japanese washi paper. So a Japanese traditionally made paper and goods made of uh, such paper. And in this, like in these windows here. Uh, we have small bits of like the Japanese paper used so it's really colorful in in reality and it's more or less like this and it has a stand that goes at an angle I cannot see this part but I'm assuming that it's the same shape like the front part and it has two bars in the middle like one two and one bar on each side <laughs> should be more like here good morning everyone do I still sketch in Procreate? Yes, um, I still sketch in Procreate, but um, and recently I have been using Procreate um, a lot for a commission that I got. This is a long commission that I'll be able to show you later this year because it's still not published, but I almost finished it. Um, I try not to take commissions if I... Um, don't really uh, have to but um, still to survive I have to take commissions sometimes and this one was really interesting so I decided to take it 
and for this commission I did a lot of sketches in, in Procreate I'll be able to show them to you later this year when the commission is officially um, out in the wild so um, that should be interesting and because this commission was for someone who um, for a company that usually doesn't deal with pictures I had to do some sketches that uh, would be really easy to understand so I did in Procreate almost what mimicked the fi finished pictures okay I'll just turn my um, fan on because it's getting hot here I hope on I hope you will not be able to hear the fan noise okay and this um, sign goes like here and on top it it has also like a opening for I'm looking inside I think I guess or light okay so it's something like this and it probably has some like legs here so you can put it like on 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 uneven ground more or less like this and let's try to shade it up a bit I, I sometimes paint straight to ink or watercolor I did some uh, if you um, if you look at my YouTube channel you will find the picture that was done with the six color small set like the set that I did in the Starbucks uh, mint can and uh, to test it I did a picture there and that one was done um, straight to watercolors so usually even though usually even like with things like this I do like really um, simple sketch so I just know the size of, of things more or less but um, yeah sometimes I do this and sometimes when I paint with um, poster colors or acrylic gouache when I have some um, ability where I have some ability to fix mistakes I will also paint without sketching but I like lines I like uh, sketching I like um, searching for um, nice perspective or nice um, angles before starting to paint so most of the times I will do sketching because it allows me to uh, figure out good angles and then and, and good composition before I start painting stuff okay so this is the first one and uh, I want to mark I want to mark that this part here is made of washi paper, so Japanese paper, and it has patterns. So if you are kind of um, curious how my reference files look like, so this is for example the reference file I used for this. Um, most a lot of times they are like from weird angles or you can see only half of the thing uh, so I have to kind of imagine how the rest looks like um, to paint the whole thing okay let's make a next one and this is a vertical sign on the shop front okay. and so it should be more or less like this and it is held up by a bar here that goes like 
all the way to the wall. And the sign itself is under the roof here. And it's like this. And we have a bar here and a bar here that also connects to the same vertical strut thing. Okay, and it has letters, but the interesting point about this one is again that the roof here, if you can see, uh, it has this uh, pattern of the roof being like this, which kind of simulates the entrance sign for Japanese kanji. So uh, it, it is supposed to help um, guide more clients into the shop. Um, usually with, ah, uh, to, so for answering Daniel's question, uh, usually with watercolors you have to look at a um, few things. The first one is, uh, are they highly pigmented? So the more um, expensive watercolors, the more like high pigmentation usually is there. So, um, which means you can get brighter and more saturated colors also you have to look at how many pigments are there in one color so if you have a color that has for example three pigments it's really it's kind of easy to make it muddy if you mix it with something else uh, so it's nice to have single single pigment colors and uh, one more thing is light fastness most um, artists grade watercolors are more expensive also because the pigments used there are more light fast so when you put later your painting on a wall or in a gallery it will not fade over time and um, also uh, they use better binder and better like uh, gum arabic quality of, of gum arabic for example which makes the paints easier to use and, and uh, they are easier to um, kind of um, smoother on the paper also what you have to look at is the granulation so how um, uh, big are the, 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 the pigment particles in the paint uh, it also differs from the maker so the reason why some uh, paints are more expensive than others is that all these parameters are uh, better but um, above uh, a certain level and the, the changes are really um, hard to notice. So most of kind of good known brands artist quality series are good. So if you buy, for example, um, Winsor Newton uh, artist quality watercolors or Schminke artist quality watercolors or Mijello artist quality watercolors or um, Senerie artist quality watercolors all of them are okay um, it's just you have to see which one you like the best uh, because some of them have different properties for example Mijello has really saturated colors and are really smooth but Schminka are more milky and um, produce more have more opaque paints in the sets and so on and so on so you have to kind of um, test and see what you like the best uh, by yourself but um, certainly I would recommend buying less colors of good artists great series than 
like whole sets of a lot of colors of cheap watercolors. You can, as you see in the YouTube video I did with the uh, set of watercolors I made in a Starbucks um, min scan, you can go um, a long way with just like six colors. And if you choose them right, and if you choose colors that you like, for example, um, you can paint a lot of stuff with just six colors. Um, I use. Usually I use a lot of colors because I paint really complicated scenes, but you can paint a lot of stuff with just six colors and it's all right. Um, so I would recommend buying like six colors of good brand of artist quality series that they have and trying to use them. And then if you want, you can buy more of different brands or the same brand or mixing brands is also okay. So. Um, I, I use mainly Schminke just because um, one of the first like big commissions that I got um, the, the the person who um, commissioned me also offered me like a 48 color Schminke set so I can use these watercolors and try them out and I was like yeah of course so um, that's why I, I have been using Schminke for a lot of my um, watercolor paintings but um, because I kind of got used to them uh, and they are uh, easily available in Japan so I can buy just the colors that I um, finished, that I used up. But um, recently I have been using also Holbein and I've been using also Mijello, which are great. And I've been testing also other brands. So um, it all depends on what you want to kind of achieve with your watercolors and what you like in your watercolors. Okay, so this one is um, uh, like a sign on, on the corner of a shop. So it's stuck to the corner of a wall so you can be seen from a lot of like angles and it also has this part here which um, is the entrance sign so the Japanese letter for um, entering shaped to um, make more clients come in apparently okay let's search for something different what do we have in my photos folder that I saved oh, this is kind of interesting what colors would be in a limited palette so um you have to have colors that make uh, easy to mix uh, new colors. So, f of course, there will be like red, blue, and yellow, and um, preferably um, cold and warm blue, cold and warm red, and cold and warm yellow. Um, and um, these colors should be. Um, good quality one pigment paints so if you mix um, secondary colors with them uh, they don't get muddy really fast <laughs> they they don't get muddy really fast so single pigments uh, single single pigment paint would be preferable you can check if a paint is single pigment just um, in the catalog of the of the maker or oh, okay page over in the catalog of the maker or on the uh, tube of the paint it usually lists the pigments that are used in this paint and also i would recommend buying paints that are more or less light fast so um, when you paint a picture with them um, you are less afraid to just put it 
outside or in a frame and display it somewhere. Okay, so this is like a, like a lantern, but it has a, a bit interesting shape. I have been using Winter, uh, Windsor and Newton watercolors also, and I think they're the uh, artist quality series that they have is quite good. They have some really interesting colors uh, that I even use right now in my main set because uh, Schminke doesn't have a color like this, for example. And there is like a, what is this? I don't know, like a dragon or, or a snake? I don't know, like here in the, in the lantern, like a drawing. And it's held up by these bars that go like this. And also here are like kanji that are probably the name of the shop. Like this. And there's like a roof all over the thing. Yeah, because um, with um, blue, red and yellow, uh, you can mix um, most colors. And if you really like to use green, for example, you can put like your favorite green or two. I often put um, gold green kind of color in a set like this because it's uh, easy to get other greens with, with it uh, if you mix it with different blue colors. Um, so it kind of depends what you do usually, um, but um, yeah, with with six colors you can get really far. With three colors you can get far. With six colors you can get re really. Um, far, and then you get like. Um, into colors that are like specialty colors so for example they have like really nice granulating effect so the pigment is really thick or um, they have like special quality to the to the color that they have so um, you can get like specialty colors specialty colors that are specialty paints that are hard to mix with just your basic like uh, RGB uh, but this is just for like special effects Yeah, because you have to have um, red like blue and blue right like red then when you mix it you'll get nice purple and with pink most of the times you get pink just by um, diluting red and adding maybe a bit of blue to it so it's more like a diluted color color, color than uh, a mix If you want to know more about mixing colors, I have a um, like really basic tutorial on watercolors on my Gumroad and there's one about uh, mixing colors so you can um, look at it and I explain there about like single pigment and multi pigment and how to do um, bright colors. Okay, so I have this one and this is also interesting because the bar here, um, it has a kind of thing. Toro. Toro. That I think can be used to 
put like hooks here and putting like something here for example like a sign or something So it looks like this. Konnichiwa desu. Thank you. Pink is a really difficult color to, to get right. Um, that's why I like to use um, nice pinks that are like um, specialty colors i um often use like magenta or cobalt magenta which is made by um uh, daler and roni because it has really nice like granulation or something and pink pink is difficult um lately i, I have been seeing a lot of uh, quinacridone magentas and quinacridone violet paints uh, that are uh, from different makers that have really interesting um, colors and properties, so maybe um, this should be uh, also interesting. Okay, let me just check if I've already painted this one or not. Because I'm skipping the photos here and I don't think I did this one. Okay, so let's do another lantern I have here. It's from the same shop that this one, but uh, it has completely different um, design. So let's try to draw it. Okay, so it has like this roof that's like this again. Samui? Hello, Atsui. Atsui, yo ne. I have been actually using a um, a set a lot which is made like in the Windsor and Newton box and has Mielo so or Mijello watercolors and as as you can see it has no green for example so every call like every green I I can get from here is only like by by mixing so you can get um, you can get but really interesting colors just from like six ten colors in your palette. Uh, Zozifu, do you take reference pictures? Yes, I have a huge library of pictures of a lot of places and a lot of stuff that I found interesting and um, I can get back to them um, when I need something. Uh, so yeah, I take a lot of reference pictures when we go somewhere with Kana. Um, most of the times um, it's like we go there and we are like, oh, I would like to do some sketching. But in the end, it's like we end up um, taking a lot of reference pictures uh, and some do some sketching sometimes. But um, yeah, it's um, a habit that I have. Uh, I have folders and folders of folders of reference pictures. Um, and most of them are mine. Some of them are reference pictures that I did um like during work in the animation studio or pictures that i found somewhere uh, but um, mostly i tend to work with my own pictures because um, it kind of frees you from the um, stress of using someone else's pictures that you just found on the internet or something so uh, it's good to have a lot of your own reference pictures to use But sometimes you have to be careful because um, even if you do your own reference pictures, if the thing that you photograph is not your, it can have some copyright things uh, attached to it. So, for example, if you go to Tokyo and do some photos of the uh, Tokyo Sky Tree, so the highest, highest building in Tokyo. Um, you can find that um, they really um, are strict about the copyright uh, 
of their building design so if you for example try to use this photo as uh, material for your I don't know anime or whatever um, they can sue you for using the image of their um, Tokyo Sky 3 without um, getting the permission so for example all the buildings that I um, featured in my Tokyo Starfronts book because they are like one main thing in the picture uh, I had to get the permission from the owners there's only one shop in the um, in the book that we could not find the owner because the shop was already um, taken down when uh, I started doing the book and we could not find the owner. So yes, for example, when I go to um, a hotel or if I go with Kana somewhere um, we take a lot of reference pictures and then I can use them uh, as inspiration for my illustrations. Sometimes not directly, so it's just an inspiration, like, oh, I don't know how a coffee shop looks like, so I'll just look for a nice coffee shop in my reference pictures, but I'll not paint it like it is, but just use it to um, kind of reconfirm my um, the things that I remember about Japanese coffee shops, for example. Uh, so, uh, I often use those photos as not direct reference. Greetings! Pozdrowienia. Okay, so this has like a tiled roof with um, like I think four or something layers of I don't know what it is metal probably and there is like the top part of the roof and it has a uh, like this stair like structure and on the other side we have these also and some bars here that go like this and some bars that support the roof like so and here also there's a step and this is all make made of wood and there's like a sign on this part here so the name of the shop is not written here but it's written here in kanji so there's like two kanji here one and two and there's a shadow coming down from this bar here which i don't know what this is probably there is a bar also on uh yeah okay so this is interesting we have a bar here also with this kind of u-shape notch in it so this probably means that there is a board like this about this wide probably that comes into this space when they want to put like a special menu or something because this is a food shop 
So I think there's there should be like a sign that that comes into this part here. Oh, this is really nice. This is how much l uh, lead uh, is wasted with these pencils. It's shorter than the usual one. Okay. I have some watercolor tutorials on my uh, Gumroad. You can get them. Uh, or if you are a Patreon supporter, you can get them for free. I will be doing more when I finish my uh, the book that I cu currently am I'm making. I want to do a series of 10 videos, like explaining basics of watercolors, uh, but there are still only five on the uh, on the Gumroad store. Okay, so this is like wooden. And this is made of stone and because the bar is the same one like on top uh, I think it has a shadow here and maybe a shadow like like this make the arrow a bit fancier if you ask me how I learned to draw this is how I learned to draw so um, when I was a when I was a kid probably in middle school uh, I was drawing a lot of things like this so I would have just my pencil or my pen or whatever and just a regular note notebook with lines or, or check checkered checked notebook and I was just drawing all kinds of weird stuff like lamps and, and desks and chairs and, and whatever I, I could see around me and um, with this I kind of by intuition got to understand how things work and uh, stuff like perspective and drawing with perspective okay so this is kind of interesting because of the boards that can be slid into those slots and uh, it's actually the first time i noticed this um thing here so um, doing sketches like this also helps you notice how things work and how they are uh, made and constructed, which is important because later you can use this knowledge to your advantage. For example, I could make a comic uh, where the um, main character goes outside of her or his shop and puts like a board like this into a sign, uh, which says like, for example, today 10% off or whatever. So um, this is kind of interesting to, to have in your mind as a reference so this is also in in a sense gathering reference for for your work okay let's um search for something more did i did this one let's see okay so i'll go through the the sketches that i did so far so we can see this is whole on youtube and you can review the the sketching sessions there So we have a lot of signs and elements of stores and yeah, things like lanterns, signs. Yeah, okay, so I haven't done this one. I'll do this one quickly because it's similar to the ones before, but it has a, a some different qualities to it. Let's zoom in. Okay. Okay, so this is a, a sign attached to a shop. 
uh, and it has this kind of roof but this roof is nice shape because it goes like this so it has a really nice shape and it has this kind of ending to it which is a bit unusual it looks more like a roof of a temple or something than just a sign and here is the bottom part so something like this and there's a gap between the metal part because this is also made by from metal again and it's a bit curved here at the end um, drawing and painting details like this and being kind of conscious about what what is this thing made of and how it's bent and how it's cut uh, to make this um, thing it's a bit important to be aware of when you draw or paint because um, it's easier then to make the thing look more realistic being aware of thickness of things and um, how how the the things are the parts are joined together allows you to be more realistic and, and accurate in your drawing and painting it's like um, drawing or painting humans if you are aware of how the bones inside are um, attached to everything else it's easier um, to imagine how the whole silhouette looks like so so if you look at this and you analyze okay um, this is attached like this and it's made of parts like here and here and has a joint like line here um, it's easier to make it look more realistic I'm not 100% accurate in these sketches but yeah I'm using an MD cotton sketchbook so this is a, a sketchbook made by the the same company that makes the MD paper um, like um, diaries and, and note, notebooks and stuff like that uh, but recently they I don't like this part here wait so recently they released um, three sizes of sketchbooks that are made of um, high cotton quality uh, high co cotton uh, how do you call it amount paper which is supposed to be good for sketching and drawing and, and pencil stuff and they actually are I got this one to to test it and um, to give my opinion about it and um, I don't like it so much when I try to do um, stuff with my fountain pen for example but I like it when it comes to sketching more than I expected Okay, and there's another bar here to make things even more complicated, like this, that supports the actual sign. The sign goes here and then connects to 
a board again here at the bottom and the whole thing is supported again with a vertical bar uh, let me see this should be the same length as this part and there's a bar here it goes more or less like this and it goes through here uh, when you draw buildings in monochrome is like with ink or just the lines or do you shadow uh, that make also the shading Shadows. Mm. With shadows, it's uh, a bit easier because it's really um, difficult to just draw walls that have nothing on them. So if you can modify the buildings that you are drawing and you don't have to be really specific, uh, it's nice because you can add things to them and make them more interesting. And also you can uh, kind of make small lies about the shadows that allow you to make um, the building more interesting. So for example, when I have a line drawing like this, I could choose by myself from where the shadow, um, from where, where the, 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 the light comes. So I can choose by myself um, where the shadow is is falling and sometimes you can even make things like make the shadow uh, fall from something that is not visible on the screen this is a trick that we used in anime also a lot with anime backgrounds it's like you can make an interesting shadow fall on the building from a thing that is not drawn on the picture so for example we can assume that there is a tree outside of this sketch and it draw it drops a shadow on, on the sign and we can make some interesting shadows so when you're drawing buildings like rendering buildings in black and white shadows are really important and um, you can use them to make the, the, the drawing a lot more interesting so um, it's important to move stuff around to make the shadow more interesting or uh, you can also drop a shadow from something that's outside of the frame even though it's just like a complete lie for example um, you can do it Okay, and so, for example, on the photo that I'm looking uh, that I'm look, uh, looking at right now to, to draw this sign. Uh, the shadows the shadow falls completely in different direction but um, I want to keep this part here bright so it's easier to understand and so I decided to make this part here uh, th this this face here in in shadow. I'm not really good at, at sketching only with pencils also so you have to be careful with this with my advice because um, 
I'm, I'm not really um, used to sketching only with, with pencil and then don't, uh, without putting any colors on, on these. <laughs> I'm making these these sketches mostly for my own kind of um, gathering information, I guess. Okay, and this part is made of wood, so let's make it more textured a bit. Everything is made of wood here, uh, except of the roof part. Okay, and there are, there are letters on the sign here, I'll just mark them so we know that there's something here. And this and three more. Here. Okay, and this part here, okay, this should be in shadow. This part here is made of metal. Dark blue color. Okay, so something like this. Let's see if we have some more things to sketch here. I know that I have some more things to sketch here, but let's search for something interesting. There are some places still in, in Japan that you can go and see these kind of old Japanese style buildings. Um, but um, most of the time you have to kind of look for them. You can go to places like the Edo Tokyo uh, Open Air Architectural Museum to see them. Um, but yeah. Okay, let's do uh, next one. And this is a more modern thing, so no, no wood parts in this one, but this is kind of challenging because it has a round, round thing. Okay, uh, so let's sketch it like really roughly first, so I can get the hold of the thing. Okay, so it has a round element like this, which is attached on the top and the bottom. And it has a more round, round there. It has a frame that goes like this. So I'm, I'm guessing the middle part is rotating when there's some wind and it has a base like this and bar like this and this is again round and with some thickness like this
Okay, so I think we have the shape more or less. And this is made of a kind of pipe thing. Okay, so something like this. <laughs> I have a normal hand. It, it has been used a lot, so it has like a bump here. But yeah, other than this, it's a normal hand. Okay, so um, let's um, make uh, some more uh, distinct lines here and try to kind of put this thing together. Okay, so here is like a thing that goes here and attaches to this part with like a metal clamp thing. So uh, this part is thin metal. There's one more here. And this is like a pipe thing. So it has thickness. This is a Karan Dash 0.7 uh, millime millimeter, millimeter mechanical pencil. It's called the uh, 844 I have it, uh, I have more details about it in my, um, I think, latest video on my channel in which I explain like sustainable tools so my kind of um, move to using tools that are more uh, sustainable so made of metal and is easier to maintain and use for longer time I like this pencil because even though it's made of aluminium, uh, it's light and it's um, even though it's made of aluminium uh, of metal, it's light because it's made of aluminium, and um, it's kind of similar to to hold um, to a regular just pencil, um, and but it's kind of short. The body is short, so. Uh, it's not for everyone because, for example, Kana doesn't like it because um, uh, it's. It, she says it's too short, and I understand. Okay, and let's draw this part here. And I also like this pencil because it doesn't have a grip section. So it doesn't have like this kind of rubber grip thing, which kind of forces you to, 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 to hold the pencil in a certain way. And because I like to sometimes be like really precise and sometimes I like to hold it uh, further away. So I like to have this um, pencil that doesn't have this grip section and um, I can decide by myself how do I want to hold it. Uh, 
And also some of the grip sections on, on some of the pencils are made of this um, what do you call it? Like metal that has a like a pattern in it. There's a, a word for it. Let's make this part here more round so it's easier to understand what this is. Okay, so um, we have this middle part which spins like this probably in the wind. And it has a bicycle on it. So I'm guessing this is like a bicycle repair shop sign that I just uh, snapped somewhere. On, on on one of our walks with Kana and has a lot of kanji and stuff in it and lots of info and there is a big sign here which says something about bicycles so Okay, and something like this, probably. Let's see if we can find something more. I have some more photos here. And okay, I already did this one. Already did this one. And let's see. Ah, this is nice. Okay, so I want to draw this one, but this is a bit different theme, so I'll do this on new page. Okay. Okay, so um, this is a bigger thing, so I'll try to uh, draw it from one perspective first and then maybe from a second perspective and it's kind of big okay let's do it like this so there's a concrete block that is something like this and it's rounded on top like rounded like this and it has a like a platform here and there's a sign on this kind of plinth that begins with these two things held down by some um, screws probably okay and there's a straight straight part and then it goes like this and like this this is too far far apart i guess okay something like this this has to be in the middle so more like this okay and uh, it goes just up 
and it has like a round top can you see it okay and it has a clock here because this is a sign for a station a uh, train not train tram station but um I only found two of these in the wild. One is in the um, Edo Tokyo uh, Open Air Architecture Museum, which is the one that I'm drawing right now. And one I found in the Arakawa train line, tram line in Tokyo. In the last station, there's like this sign really similar to this one probably exactly the same design but i haven't seen any one of these um anywhere else and i think there's they i think there's one also in the arakawa line when you there's like a open air museum of old train cars that you can go also so probably in places like this you can still find them but um yeah in the wild wild i only saw one uh, in the uh, Arakawa line, the last station. Okay, so here's a clock, and here's the name of the station, and here's like a commercial of some sort. Um, so I'll just sketch this thing a bit better, and then we can go for some details and and. Okay, I uh, I sketched this one really lightly right now, so I can. Um, now add the details and some value to it. Okay. So there's a clock inside. It has like hours. And goes like round here <laughs> and it has a frame here in the middle Jesus topped like this and also another one on the side and it's all made of metal and it goes it has a lip here which probably allows the thing to be opened and serviced when they have to go uh, and fix the clocks or something so something like this and And there is the pipe that holds it upright and two like bulges that are in the shape of kagami mochi. And uh, a metal plate that has some bolts in it that holds it up to the that holds it together to the uh, to the concrete thing here. And because this would be probably um, in between two lanes of just regular road, because this is a streetcar um, stop, so this concrete uh, part here would, I guess, 
work as a kind of barricade so um, if you're waiting on the tram stop you can you get you don't get plowed by a car if they uh, kind of um, don't notice this the tra tram station so this part is concrete and it's painted in this like visibility pattern rounded so something like this I'm guessing okay and there is the here is the, the, it continues with the part that you stand on to ride the train. So something like this and there is the name of the station here with some smaller text and there is a commercial here because this part is only visible uh, for the cars that are coming like from from this direction I guess okay this was kind of interesting Let's zoom out a bit. Which is the best period to come to Japan? Probably now because it's not so hot yet and uh, the rain, rain season is not uh, started yet, has not started yet so it's nice and cool and not rainy so now is the best part probably okay let me just switch my battery in my camera for a second Okay, we should be on again. Hello! And let me see if I can find something interesting. Um, okay, this is interesting. I have a post box here. So I'll try to sketch a Japanese old style post box too. And again, this is like, um, let's start with a rough sketch. So I have a um, line here and here, and it goes, it goes thicker in this part. And it has like a kind of cap thing. And it goes like here and it's round. And it has like a stone plinth or however do you call this part here and it goes like this and this part here is nice and round 
and goes like this then there's a square also part here which probably is for taking out the content if I not I'm not mistaken And here is the part in which you put letters in, I guess. And something like... Like this, with a door here, on, with a hinge and a window. And I think this... Uh, hole for the key and I think the window is to check if there is any mail inside without opening it without uh, if it's not necessary okay so the base shape is kind of like this I guess okay so we can add some details Okay, so here's the window for putting in stuff and it has like a round cover around it. Okay. And this part is round with a kind of lip like this I guess as you can see probably I'm trying to use the the thickness of the line to make stuff more kind of round or almost disappearing into another shape of the object so here for example I'll make the line thin so it seems that it it's kind of welded to this part okay like this and we have another lip thing here goes like this and there's the bottom part it goes down and this part here and I forgot this also has like a double leap here this is a complicated shape and it has a stone base which is kind of rough yeah yeah, yeah. this is the same thing that uh, I'm, I'm doing with the coloring ink uh, I still have one piece that I have to do with the coloring ink with to, for this commission uh, I'll be able to show it to you later this year uh, when it goes out uh, but yeah I have been doing the whole thing with colored inks and because I'm not really uh, used to using coloring inks um, I have been using Procreate to make some um, sketches to show the client what I want to do but also for myself to um, imagine how I would like to use the ink <laughs> it was an interesting process but um, yeah I prefer watercolors uh, because um, they are more predictable for me at least
especially when you um, mix uh, color inks with water and you kind of make them thinner um, the colors tend to change a lot so if you have for example red um, color ink and you make it thinner by adding a bit of water it tends to go like pink or crazy colors so sometimes it's hard to control them and they have a lot of advantages uh, really strong colors really intensive colors and some of them are waterproof so you can layer them easily and some of them when thinned down with um, water have really beautiful shades that um, allow you to do some interesting fall transitions that cannot be done with watercolors um, but yeah overall they are kind of hard to control and Okay, so we have a post box, which is nice and round. Okay, something like this, I guess. Morning coffee, I also have co co coffee. I have been getting used to drinking coffee without any sugar and with um, almond milk or how do you call it? Um, mm -mm -mm. On you so uh huh? Tofu. Tofu. uh no not tofu but um how do you call it this these small beans with from which tofu is made so I'm 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 kind of getting used to drinking coffee with, with no sugar which is a bit of shock for me but yeah it's good for me. It's good for you too, so I recommend. Soybean, yeah. Soy soy milk. With soy milk, soy soy, soy milk and um, no sugar. Soy soy. Okay, let me see if I have something here more. Okay, this is a quick one I want to do because it's kind of interesting. Okay, so we have a sign for a shop again on a roof. And it's kind of this lemon shaped sign. I think it looks like lips, maybe. And... Um, it has this part here which is just the bark of the tree so um, from which the the, shine, the sign would, was made so it's just like the the rough bark of a tree um, so the whole sign looks like just a tree that was cut like this and it has this nice wood texture 
yeah, of course it has wood texture because it's wood but it has a nice texture it goes like this and it is supported by two legs that are of like this shape with metal cups on, at the end So one here and one here and this part again rests on like metal supports that are something like this because this has to be really heavy actually it's a really thick piece of just a tree <laughs> and this whole thing lies on like two metal boards that I suppose are helping to kind of distribute the weight of the of the whole thing. So something like this. And it has letters, of course. Like kanji here and big letters here and one more here and some smaller letters here It's dropping a shadow here on the roof like this which is an interesting sign um, I'm not I'm not um, if I was making a shop in Japan and I would like a sign I would not go for something like this for something more like this probably but um, it's interesting looks like one of these tables that are made just of rough cut piece of a tree uh, which are incredibly expensive so I'm guessing this was also expensive okay let's see if I have something more here there's again the train sign thing I would like to fill the bottom of this page here. Let's see. Ah, yeah, I'll show you something when when while I'm searching. And I'm just using my own photos that I took while I was walking around um, all kinds of places like Nippori in Tokyo and um, the Museum of Old Buildings like Edo Tokyo Tatemono in, in Tokyo. Uh,
Okay, I painted most, I drew, I drew most of the signs that I had here in the list. I guess I can paint, I, I can do a last one here, which is more modern. Okay, so this one is like a really popular shape of sign that was i think in japan in about i don't know 1970s to like 1980s maybe which is made of metal and plastic and this part here is made of plastic and it's kind of this thick And, there, and then there's like a metal part that goes around here, which has a bit of thickness to it. Maybe a bit longer. and there is the same plastic sign on the other side and this part is kind of made of ribbed metal so it has this kind these ridges ri ridges ridges like this And this is divided in three parts, with one being blue, and the middle one being red, and the this part is being blue again, and this is just like an aluminium kind of extrusion thing and it's attached to a building with a metal plate like this and for example this one says um, like tobacco so uh, just cigarettes and it's kind of rare in in japan to to see like um signs like this that's why I took a photo of this one because it's nice and retro looking I don't like cigarettes and I don't smoke cigarettes but um, some of the signs are really nice and it's just like 24 hour open and stuff like this in kanji and also some kanji here it says jido hanbaiki so um, automatic selling machine So something like this and this is mounted on a like a part of the building like a window or something and it has a small roof here so this would be light up during the evening and would advertise place where you can buy cigarettes from like a automat automated vending machine Okay, so I think we'll st uh, I will start. I will stop the stream today, and um, the Tokyo at Night book should be published on time. So the time that's written in the uh, Japanese Amazon page, where you can pre-order the book. I think I'm holding my my thumbs and whatever to to get the book ready. But I already have twenty uh, three of the 30 main pictures done and uh, some other things already done for the book so we should be okay I'm still waiting for some other content that I want to publish in the book uh, that I will do uh, with some collaboration of other people so I need to wait for that uh, but um, 
yeah, uh, the things are going smooth for the book. Uh, uh, already we started on the design and on the cover and the layout and all the things like deciding the paper and all kinds of stuff. I'm writing small articles about me making the book uh, on my Patreon. So you can, if you are my Patreon supporter, you can read about me uh, making the Tokyo at night book there. I'm uploading like blog entries uh, with pictures and stuff so you can uh, follow the progress uh, of me doing the book and also uh, this sketchbook here that you can see and I filled about what 20 pages of this already um, I will be scanning this probably today and I'll try to upload it as a PDF uh, file to Patreon also so if you are uh, supporting on Patreon you can download um, you will be able to download these sketches in nice high um, resolution to just watch them in your kind of leisure time if that's what you would like to do I have a lot of fun doing this more fun that I actually um, thought I would so um, I will probably be doing more of these streams but I have to uh, choose more nice photos with things that I would like to sketch for the next streams Okay, so that's it for part three. Uh, thank you for joining me today and I'll see you in some of my next videos. I have been using the Karan Dash 0.7. Uh, it's, it's called 844 pencil and uh, eraser. And this is the um, Radic 400 um, electric eraser that I was using. For this and this is done on MD cotton paper uh, which is this kind of sketchbook with nice cotton paper for sketching okay see you in the next stream and see you in the next video I'll get to making one soon probably and um, as always feel free to comment share and subscribe and you can also support me on patreon where you where you'll be able to get the sketches in PDF form okay Thanks for joining me and see you next time.